B'Shem Hashem Na'aseh V'Nasliach. Welcome everyone to our weekly shiur on the parasha with the perush of the Zerah Shimshon. Tonight's parasha is parashat Shemot, Sefer Shemot. We will be delving into the Rush Tet, the ninth ma'amar of the Zerah Shimshon. Tonight's shiur is dedicated Le'ilui Nishmat Ya'agov Ben Hayim. And for the Rufu'ah Shalema of... Um, Chaya Bat Sharona, Yehuda Ben Afarin, and Morvarid Bat Sara. We should have a Rafa Ashalema, and it's dedicated to Elun Ishmat Zera Shimshon, Harav Shimshon Chaim Ben Nachman Michael. Midrash Yalkut, the Yalkut Shimoni says, Shemot Rabba. The Midrash says, We're coming to the story of Moshe Rabbeinu and the Sene, Moshe Rabbeinu and the burning bush. And the Pasuk says that the, and behold, the Sene, the, sene, the, the, the bush was burning, but it wasn't being um, burnt, or what's the, consumed. consumed. Thank you. Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Midrash says, The Holy One, blessed is He, said, Al yede sin'a she san'u echab le Yosef yarudu le Mitzrayim. Because of the hatred of the brothers of Yosef towards Yosef, the Shvatim, the Jews, went down to Egypt because of their hatred. Uvishvilo anin nigle basene. And because of Him, I will reveal myself in a bush. Veg alotam, and I will free them. Shenemar, as it says, Galti bizroa mecha bene yagov, ve yosef sela. As it says, with a powerful arm you redeemed your nation, the children of Yaakov and Yosef sela. So basically, this midrash is saying Hashem's appearance through a burning bush was because of the hatred of the brothers of Yosef towards Yosef. And because of that, God decided to reveal himself in a sne, in a, in a bush. And it was because of their hatred that B'nai Israel went in. And in the zechut of Yosef, that Hashem brought them out of Egypt. Right? Now this is, this, this Midrash is... Quite baffling. First of all, the connection between the sene and the hatred. One second. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam Sheha Kol Yonihi Amit Baro. Amen. What does it mean that Hashem chose to show Himself, reveal Himself to Moshe Rabbeinu for the first time in the sene, in the burning bush, and that? That was because of the hatred of his brother, uh, Yosef's brothers towards him. Because the words sene and sin'a have the same root. Sin'a means hatred in Hebrew. Sene has the same root. Even though it's not written the same way. Sene is with a samech. Sin'a with a, with a sin. But there, you find that a lot in Hebrew. That words are sometimes interchangeable. Like for instance, Chachamim say... That when God gave the Torah on Har Sinai, on the Mount of Sinai, He created Sina. The reason why Hashem decided to give the Torah on Mount Sinai was because He knew that it's going to create hatred. Sina. Sinai, Sina. Why would it create hatred? I don't know. Go figure. It's been what? 3,000 something years after the giving of the Torah? And we Jews are the most beloved nation in the world. Right? So, that's where it comes from. We received the Torah, we decided to say yes to Hashem, to accept the yoke of the Torah, to accept the responsibility of the Torah, and that caused friction in the world. You know, we're not going to get into that. So now he says, But this Midrash that we just mentioned right now, just before, about... 
God revealing himself in the Sene, in the, in, in the burning bush, and that having to do with the hatred of the brothers, and also having to do with us being released, freed from Egypt. In the Zechut of Yosef, he says, it's, it's all very baffling. What, is the, what does the the Sene have to do with, with this? Like, what do they have to do with each other? What does the burning bush have anything to do with the brothers of Yosef and their hatred? And what does the burning bush have to do with the fact that, oh, in Yosef's zechut, the Jews were freed? What does it have to do with the Sene? What does it have to do with the, with the burning bush? What does Yosef have to do with the burning bush? You understand? Okay. The odd. My mighty Ra'aya Migra de Ga'alta Bizroa Amecha. What does this Midrash prove by the verse when it says, with a powerful arm, you redeemed your nation? That they will, they will be redeemed specifically in the merit of Yosef. says, But the Pasuk says something different. Here it's saying that the Jews were redeemed in the merit of Yosef. But the Pasuk says, Bene Yaakov ve Yosef Sela. That's the Pasuk in Tehillim we just read. The Midrash brings that same Pasuk. That the children of Yosef and Yaakov Sela. So it sees, it, he's saying, it seems the Pasuk itself is not saying that the Jews were redeemed in the merit of Yosef, at least not Yosef alone. It was Yosef and Yaakov. Right? So how could it. Only pick out Yosef and say we were redeemed in the zechut of Yosef. The zechut of Yosef wasn't alone the only factor for us being redeemed from the exile. It was Yaakov also. But the Midrash does not give any credit to Yaakov Avinu. Here. Ve'od, and furthermore, Ma'in yan zeh im pasuk ve'hina sene bo'er ba'esh. And what does it have to do with the burning bush? The fact that the bush is burning. Why does the Midrash mention the redemption came about through Yosef's merit in connection with the burning bush? Now, we're going to do a couple of different things and hopefully these things are going to be, these questions are going to be answered. So far, any questions? Okay, great. The Yeshloma, we may explain. The Chavanat HaMidrash Hu Letaret Lama Davka Nigla Kadosh Baruch Hu LeMoshe Basene that the kavana, the intention of the Midrash is to explain why Hashem revealed Himself to Moshe Rabbeinu the first time specifically in a burning bush. Why didn't He choose anywhere else? I mean, there's plenty of places that you would come up with if someone would ask you, like, hey, if you had a decision to make for God, God came and asked you one day, hey, I'm about to reveal my stuff to somebody. I was thinking, I don't know, do you have any ideas what would be the best place for me to reveal myself? By the way, if you do hear God asking you that question, check yourself into a hospital immediately. Okay? Because <laughs> that ain't going to happen. But, okay, so... <laughs> Why basically the question is why didn't I don't even I didn't even hear his question and I'm still gonna ignore him. Um, why is it that God did not choose any other place to reveal Himself? As we said, the midrash initially says that the reason is because the lashon the language sene is interchangeable, so to speak, with the word sina. Hatred. And that's why Hashem revealed Himself in the Sene to basically tell us, you know why you were in Egypt? Because of the hatred of B'nai Israel towards their brother Yosef. Right? Yes, question? Yeah. Weren't they there to clean themselves and because God promised they were not? Yes, yes. All of that is very true that we were supposed to go to the exile. You kind of... There were so many different factors involved, so many different answers as to should we have, maybe we wouldn't have, maybe we wouldn't, be, we wouldn't have to be slaves per se, we just had to be wanderers in a land that's not ours, right? So there's, there's, there's different ways of looking at it where we didn't technically have to be forced into slavery. Well, they chose to. 
Well, it starts before that. There was no Torah given yet. They were, yeah, when Jacob won, they were, they said How, there. Yes, but it started from before that. Started from before that, and that was because of the sinah of the brothers towards Yosef. There's a lot of commentaries that talk about the main, main reason why the Jews went into exile in Egypt, and many commentaries talk about it, it being the factor being Yosef. Now, we could still say, but it was planned from before. Yes, it was planned. Did it need to be that bad? Not necessarily. But we're not going to get into that. We're just going to discuss the aftermath. You said the brothers hating Yosef, that's the reason. Right. But most people say, okay. All right. So he says, "Shekeshem shegalut mitzrayim baba avon mechirat Yosef." Just as the exile of Egypt came on account of the sin of the sale of Yosef, therefore, sinah sene. That's what the midrash is saying. Kemoshe katav bal megale amukot. She says, "The megale amukot writes in Zohar Chadash, in in Echa." He says like this. Because the tribes, how many of the tribes were involved in the selling of Yosef? Ten. Ten. Because the tribes were responsible in their father uh, mourning Yosef for 22 years, right? Chafbet Shanim. Because of this, they were liable for Galut, for exile. 22 years for each of the Shevatim. It was like a sentence. So it was 22 years per Shevet. Ten, ten of the tribes were responsible for selling Yosef. Ten years each, that's how many years? 220. How many years were the Jews in Egypt for, in exile? 210. So there's ten years here that's not accounted for, right? So he says, Because the entire ten Shavatim died outside of Eretz Israel, therefore it was like considered exile to them. Why? Because Yosef HaTzadik was moved later. Some say the Shavatim were also moved. Either way, they died outside of Eretz Israel. Because they died outside of Eretz Israel, that was like a part of exile, a, sort, sort of like a punishment. So one year was deducted from each Shevet, leaving 210 years instead of 220. But right? when Reuven will be part of it, wasn't there when was There's a lot of Mepharshim that talk about how Reuven was also a part of it. Because he could have done more, you know, he should have done more as the older brother, so he still counted as the 10. So why, why did they use Hashem as the Right. And therefore, he, Hashem, appeared in the Sene, in the burning bush, to kind of hint to Moshe Rabbeinu and the Jews forever that the reason for the exile was because of hatred. Have we learned our lesson? No. I don't know. And now. Now that 210 years are over, they are now destined, they are deserving to be redeemed. Therefore, when Hashem appeared in the Sene, after 210 years, He was hinting the 210 years that the, that the Shevatim were sentenced for, basically made up for the rest of the Jews to be exiled, it's over, that's why I'm showing myself in a senet to hint to you that originally the problem stemmed from the brothers. And now it's over. Aval, it says, however, aval al This is difficult. The dilma hagalut hu This is beautiful, like, things that you would never think of. Dilma, maybe, Maybe the exile was for a different reason altogether. Who says the exile was because of the Shavatim? Right? Maybe the exile was for a different reason. The Katav, for it is written, Halev Aryeh, the Sefer Lev Aryeh says, 
in beginning of Parashat Shemot, Beshem Gale Razaya, in the name of Gale Razaya. The name itself means the, re- the revealer of secrets. These are big chachamim. In the name of Gale Razaya, he says, Shebishvil Shehevi Yaakov Avinu Leshon Targum Torah, because Yaakov Avinu brought Aramaic language into the Torah, as it says, Sorry. As it says in the parasha, when Yaakov Avinu and Lavan meet, when? When Yaakov Avinu ran away from Lavan's home, right? With his children and his family. On the way, Lavan catches up. And they get into it, like a verbal war, so to speak. It really was. And then they make a peace treaty. So, they making this peace treaty. Yaakov Avinu says, okay, tell your men, gather stones, let's put it here, make a bridge. And the bridge will be the witness between us making this peace treaty. Lavan calls this bridge, Yegar Sahduta. Which in Aramaic means... The, the, the bridge of testimony. Right? That's what it was. It was a bridge of testimony. It was the ed. It was the witness. And he says, Yaakov was the reason for Lavan bringing this terminology into the Torah. Yegar Sahtuta is written in our Torah. The entire Torah is what language? Lashon HaKodesh. The Hebrew language. Yegar Sahtuta is not Lashon HaKodesh. It's Aramaic. Right? So he says, Yaakov Avinu was the cause of Lavan bringing this language into the Torah. Because he said, bring these stones and make a bridge. This is what the Galer uh, Zaya says. Because of this, his children were destined for exile in Egypt. Because Yaakov Avinu caused a foreign language to be spoken in the Torah. Even though Yaakov Avinu himself named the bridge, what did he name it? Gal Ed. He named it in Hebrew. Gal Ed. What's a Gal in Hebrew? No, Gal also means. Oh, oh, uh, seashore? Bridge. Bridge. Bridge? (laughs) Don't laugh at me. I can't. No, no, no. In, in, In. Modern Hebrew could mean so many different oh. things. It could mean popsicle, for all I care. But here, Gal Ed means a bridge, that's an Ed. Ed is a pen, a witness. <laughs> <laughs> Even though Yaakov Avinu called the bridge in Hebrew, unfortunately, the Galera Zaya says he still was the cause of Lavan giving it an Aramaic name, and that Aramaic name ended up in the Torah. Now don't ask like, like I, I myself, like, you know, Hashem wrote it in the Torah, so don't write it in the Torah. Why do we have to write that Lavan wrote this, named it, Lavan called it whatever he wanted, Yaakov Avinu said, I don't care, I'm calling it Gal Ed. Write that in the Torah. Wasn't it, I, it wasn't an authorized covenant? Um, what do you mean? Oh, okay. That that's that's something else. That the fact that the reason he made a covenant with Lavan, it shouldn't have made a covenant with Lavan. Fine, but that's not what we're talking about now. Right now, he's saying the fact that Lavan called it an Aramaic name and it was written in the Torah. You have a point. Okay, you get one star. <laughs> No, these stars count. You, you get a free car wash after 10. <laughs> what? But only on Tuesdays when I have my Kabbalah class. Okay? And this is why the Pasuk says, This is beautiful. Just listen, listen to this. Guys, you think these Chachamim, you know, people sometimes think like, where do these Chachamim come up with these things? If it doesn't fit, they wouldn't put it there. If it doesn't, look at how it fits to the story of B'nai Israel and the brothers. 
You ready for this? This will hit you like a brick wall. So he says, the Jews went into Galut because of Yaakov Avinu making this treaty with, with, um, with, with Lavan, and Lavan calling the place Yegar Sahduta in Aramaic, an Aramaic term found its way into our Torah. Because of that, his children were destined for exile, right? Listen to this. This is why it is written, The brothers threw Yosef at Tzadik into the pit and they, they're sitting down and then they see a caravan of Ishmaelim coming over. Ba'a, where, from where are they coming? From Gilad. How do you spell Gilad? Gimel, if you want to write Gilad. Gimel Yud Lamed Ein Dalid. But in the Torah, there is no Nekudot, right? The Torah writes Migilad Gimel Lamed Ein Dalid. There is no Gimel. So if you read it without any Nekudot, Gal Ed. There is a caravan of Ishmaelim coming from Gal Ed. Who are these Ishmaelim? They were the same Ishmaelim that sold Yosef to Egypt. The beginning of the exile was what? The root of the exile, the seed of the exile was Yosef being in Egypt. Where did it start from? Gal Ed. Galer Azayah is saying, that's why the Pasuk says Gal Ed. Why? Because it all started from Yaakov Avinu making that treaty, calling the bridge Gal Ed. But Lavan called it Igar Sahduta. Because of that same bridge, his children were destined to be in exile. Who did it start with? His own children. The ten tribes selling Yosef. And that goes back to the Senet, that same hatred showing itself in the bush, the burning bush. Hashem was hinting the exile that started because of the hatred of the brothers selling their own brother to the Ishmaelim that came from quote-unquote Gal Ed, ends now after 210 years, which is the equivalent of each of the Shavatim getting 10 years minus one. 22 years. 20, no. 22. 22 years, sorry, minus one. 22 years. Each of the 10 Shavatim getting 22 years each minus one. Dahainu Gal Ed shekara Yaakov lema shekara Lavan Yigar Satuta. And that was Gal Ed that Lavan called Yigar Satuta. What part? So because of something Laban said, we were destined to go into exile? So, so that's what he's saying. What he's bringing out is yes. Yaakov Avinu didn't say it. He didn't say it. But he was the cause of it. We had, well, we had to go. Uh, we're not, we're not going to deal with the yes, we had to go anyway. We're not dealing with that right now. We're not going to deal with that. There's a lot of different, there are a lot of different things that we could say. We had to go anyway. Right? But you always have to understand something. When we say we had to go, it doesn't really mean that we really actually had to go. You're saying into exile? Into exile, into Egypt. We see different places in the Torah where something was supposed to happen and Hashem makes it in a different way. Like for instance, how many years were we had to go into exile? Did we go for 400 years into exile? What well, Ended it early, right? And he didn't have a choice. He didn't have a choice. So, so that's what we say. That's what we say. Again, which means what? It could have been avoided altogether. So the fact that Hashem said to Avram Avinu, your kids are going to be, it could have been somehow worked out where we made it, maybe never had to. You understand? It's the cause and effect. But that doesn't mean it had to happen. Let me finish. Bezeu. No, 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 really. Vezehu, and this is, we're going to hint to so many different things that everyone is so, are so familiar with. It's going to open up new worlds for us. He says, so did I kind of like yeah. answer your confusion too? Okay, because you always look very confused. It confuses me. Vezehu, <laughs> <laughs> it's the rain. Vezehu arami ovedavi, and this is... <laughs> this is indicated in the verse in the pasuk when we say Arami Oved Avi, which means an Aramean, an Arami 
tried to destroy my forefather, which is in Devarim. Arami Ovedavi. Now, when do we say Arami Ovedavi? Pesach. Pesach, right? We say Arami Ovedavi Vayagor Mitzrayma, right? And Aramean wanted to destroy my forefather. And Vayagor, huh? We say by Bikurim. And we, our forefathers went into Egypt. Ever ask yourself, what do these two have to do with each other? The fact that an Arami wanted to destroy my forefather, which was, the Arami was Lavan, wanted to destroy Yaakov, what did that have to do with the exile, to, exile in Egypt? What did Lavan have to do with the exile? We say it every Pesach Seder night. Not one person thinks, what does this have to do with anything? All we're thinking is, where's dinner? Let's be honest. Okay, we're hungry. We're sitting there going, did I lean on the left when I ate that last piece or do I have to do it again? Was I Yotze? Oh God, please tell me I was Yotze. I don't remember if I leaned. Or who, did someone weigh this matzah? Was it really 27? Is it 27 grams or is it 30 grams? Or is it 18 grams? Right? When you're thinking these things, you get hungry and hungry here, right? <laughs> and someone has, so no one's really thinking about it. But we say it every Pesach said the night. Arami Ovedavi. And he says, Arami Davka. The term, the, uh, the, the Aramean or Aramean, I don't even know how to say it in English, is used here deliberately. Dainu Leshon Arami, which is talking about the language of Aramaic. Vayered Mitzrayma. And right there the Pasuk says, and they went down to Mitzrayim. Yaakov Avinu went down to Mitzrayim. And then, and then, what do we say in the Pesach Seder right afterwards? No one's going to remember this. It's a little bit hard. What comes right after? Anus al piyadibur. Right? Which if you translate it, like literally, would mean that we were forced al piyadibur because of God's words. Meaning, we were forced to go to Egypt because that was, that was, so to speak, spoken by God. He had spoken that your children are going to be exiled and we were forced by that dibur. Right? But now, with, with what we learned right now through the Zerah Shimshon, let's translate it differently. Anus al piha dibur. Yaakov was, we say it in the Pesach Seder, we say, Yaakov was forced by the word. What word? Dahainu? Had dibur shel arami shehevi Torah. It is the words that this Aramean said that were written in the Torah. We were forced to go into exile. He like cursed us and then... It was like this terminology that he came up with ended up in the Torah. His words were the force factor that the Jews went into exile because of. So to speak, a punishment, chas like a uh, like a defect that was born because of it and caused Yaakov Avinu's children to go into exile. Now, what the Galera, uh, the, the, um, uh, Galera Zaya is saying is, 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 it's crazy. It fits so well into so many pasukim that we have and in things that we say on the Seder night. You know, that most of us, let's be honest, we don't understand it. Arami Ayagar Mitzrayma, Anus al Dibur. Like, you know, we say it, we, we say it pretty fast, we go forward, and we don't really know what we're saying. And then grandma or grandpa is reading it in Persian. <laughs> you know, and, and everyone's like, okay, someone bring the dinner while they're doing the Farsi, bring the food. <laughs> Come on, we're all doing it. I know, some of them have their hands in the tadig, you know, while they're reading, like, can I be the piece of that? And then the religious guy in the crowd goes, no, 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 you can't have any other taste in your mouth right now, only matzah, right? And then the family breaks apart because he became religious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that almost never happens. <laughs> That's a funny joke. <laughs> and like, oh, oh, hey, no, we can't eat now. Uh, <laughs> so, it's amazing how that fits, no? It's amazing how the words of the Haggadah, please wait, please hold your question. It's amazing how the words of the Haggadah fit so perfectly into the narrative that the Zerah Shimshon is building through the Gale Razaya, that the, what, the punishment of Bnei Israel, the reason of Bnei Israel going into exile, was actually because of Yaakov Avinu's treaty with Lavan, and Lavan speaking words of Aramaic, and 
that Aramaic ending up in the Torah and because of that. Now, he's going to prove himself as to why this is a problem. Someone might say, why is it a problem? Okay, you spoke Aramaic, it's written in the Torah. Who said it's a problem? Okay, speak Aramaic. At, at least it's not like, <laughs> you know. Okay. Okay. And the reason why this is considered a bad thing, why was this an Avera? The language of Targum, the language of Aramaic, is a very physical language. It is very much um, attached to the external forces, like the klipot. It's not, okay. No, I don't remember. Anybody else recall her saying words like that? Ben, you haven't been here long enough, Ben. <laughs> okay, I misspoke. The Aramaic Lashon is, is very much um, um, attached to the exter external forces, the forces of impurity. Now, <laughs> <laughs> this is why we say that the ministering angels do not understand Aramaic. They only understand Lashon HaKodesh. They do not understand Aramaic. Why? Because it's a very external language. It's a very physical language. And the ministering angels are pure holiness. So they can't comprehend. They, cannot, they don't want to get attached to that. Therefore, like when we do Slichot, during the 40 days of Slichot, when we do the Sephardim do Slichot, right? If you have a minyan, we say if you have a minyan, if you have 10 people, you could do all of Slichot, even those parts that is written in Aramaic. But if you don't have a minyan, you have to skip the parts that are in Aramaic, only do the ones that are in Hebrew. Why? Because when you have a minyan, we have an Asara, we have a minyan, Shekhinah is there, Hashem's presence is there. And you're speaking to Hashem. Hashem understands all languages. Right? So you can use the Aramaic in the languages. When there is no minyan, our tefillot are carried up by ministering angels. Because there's no shekhinah, you don't have a minyan. Therefore, if you're saying the Aramaic parts, the angels don't understand what you're saying. So you don't use Aramaic. What about women's tefillot? What about women's tefillot? Why? You're better than me? What, what does that mean? What does that Please explain yourself. Yeah. What is, no, this is the 21st century. <laughs> okay? Don't be like, no, when a woman davens even alone, Shekhinah is there. Right? <laughs> um, um, yeah, so angels are afraid of women. <laughs> they, bring, they, they bring MP3 recorders and they go, God, I don't know what she said. I recorded the whole thing. I brought it for you. I was afraid. I, no. um, <laughs> that's, a, that's a good question. It has to be in Hebrew. But let's not get into the meat and potatoes of detailed halakha. That's not what this class is for. That's on Thursday night. <laughs> okay. okay. We'll get into halakha later. But... Um, um, you're, you have a valid question. I have to look it up. I, I have to look it up. I have to look it up. So now, that's why it says the ministering angels do not understand Aramaic. So our point is made. The Zerah Shimshon is saying, because it's a non-holy language, the angels don't understand it. And because it, it ending up into the Torah, it became a source of like, it was like a downfall for Yaakov Avinu. And that's why Part of the punishment was the children going into exile. This is all the build-up for Zerah Shimshon's question. These are all, this is all the build-up. Remember, rem one sec. Remember, the question was, <clears throat> who says that the reason of the Jews going into exile was because of the hatred of the brothers of Yosef? Maybe there was a different reason. What was the other reason? Yaakov Avinu and Lavan. And he just proved that there are those Mepharshim that say the reason the Jews went into exile was because of Yaakov Avinu and Laban. So he says, now what do you say? Now the Midrash is saying, oh, Hashem revealed himself in the bush because of the sin'ah of the brothers. Who says that was even the reason? 
of the exile. The exile was because of Yaakov Avinu, right? So then, if we have this now, meaning our question comes back to its original state. So why did God reveal himself in a bush? Why didn't he reveal himself somewhere else? And don't tell me it was because of hatred or whatever that the Jews went into Egypt. No, the Jews went into Egypt because of Yaakov Avinu. So now what do you tell me? Why did God reveal himself in a bush and not a Tesla? Because Teslas were back ordered. That was really good. <laughs> Copyright that one. Mishum Hachi. Mishum Hachi, so he says now. He says, because of this, Siem HaMidrash, the Midrash ends up and says, Uvishvilo ani nigle basene. Because of him, I will reveal myself in a sene, in a bush. Because of who? Because of Yosef. Kelomar. What is the Midrash trying to say? Even if you tell me there was another reason, even if you know that there was another reason for the Jews going into exile, like the reason that we just said, because Yaakov Avinu and Lavan, we still have a reason we can understand why Hashem revealed Himself in a bush. Why? Because, because we were redeemed in the zechut of Yosef. Why? Another brain freeze. Because Yosef did not ever want to speak Egyptian. Brain freeze, huh? Because Potiphar's wife came and said to Potiphar and everybody else, after she... Um, huh? defamed him and misled everyone to believe that Yosef was the one who was trying to seduce her, right? What did she say? She said, You brought us this Hebrew man. What does it mean Hebrew man? He was a Hebrew speaking man. He never lost that. He was always known as, ah, look at this Hebrew. Because he wouldn't speak Egyptian. Right? He didn't care what people said to him. He didn't care what he looked like, what he sounded like. He would refuse to speak Egyptian. The Saramashkim Amar, also the Saramashkim, the head, the head of the, the butler. <laughs> the butler said, Visham Itanu Naar Ivri. And there was with us in our jail cell a young Ivri, also referred to him. As an Ivri. Shafilo Leshonenu Enomakir, he does not recognize our language. He doesn't give our language kavod. The odd, and furthermore. Ba Gavriel Velimedoshiv Imlashon. We know that Gavriel came and taught Yosef at Sadiq in his dungeon 70 languages. Kedeshi Yahol Daber Bifne Paro in order to be able to speak before Paro. Aval Chutzme Otah Pam Lodiber. Before that incident of before that time being before Paro, he did not speak it. Or, alternatively, you could even say, <laughs> If it was not before Paro, out of respect for Paro, he wouldn't speak Egyptian. He would only speak when he was around Paro, out of respect for the king of Egypt. Other than that, he would refuse to speak Egyptian. <laughs> and we know, we know. <coughs> Chachamim tell us, what was one of the zechuyot of Bnei Israel being redeemed from Egypt? They did not change their language. They did not change their language. Language has a lot of importance for Am Yisrael. It is your, it is your core. It is your... how much you've assimilated somewhere or not. Right, exactly. That's what Yosef is meant to represent. Right. And you should know, by the way, this is my secret. I came up with this. I don't know if this is really true or not. I feel this... I feel this was true. So don't like research and then like email me. By the way, I'll just delete. Okay. This is just my personal thing that I found. You go into any country, you come from, let's say, let's say from Iran. I don't know why I picked that country, just for this. You come from Iran into the United States. You've been here for 30 years. You still can't speak fluent English. And w even if you do speak fluent, fluent English, you, you kind of have an accent. 
it comes out. Let's just be honest. Unless you were very, very young, then you're good. But if you came after the age of 12, 13, 14, something like that, this is a chair. Okay, I am book. Things like that. <laughs> Just reminding myself of ESL classes. So, <laughs> so that's that. However, and any other country also, any other country, I've seen it. You could be in Britain. You could try your best to have an English accent. From a different country, you, they'll know that you're a foreigner. Okay? Listen. Listen. Go to Israel. Find, go to like the Persian community in Israel. The guy's been there for like 15 years max. They don't even know, they don't even know how to speak Farsi anymore. No joke. Like I have family members that went there after like four or five years. Like they don't even know Farsi anymore. It's all Hebrew. It is the most, I, the Hebrew language is the most um, like dominant language. Mamash, like, it's like you can't speak any other language. I remember going first time in, to Israel, like, like, meeting my family, and I was like, how do you not speak Farsi anymore? Like, uh, yata, and, they have a, and then they have an Israeli accent when they speak Farsi. It's, either, it's the other opposite way. Like, you, you kind of like feel like, how did that happen? Right? But it really is a very dominant language. The reason why, this was all a built up to what I'm trying to say. Is Lashon HaKodesh Lashon HaKodesh is the language that the world was created with Your soul speaks the language That's why it's a dominant language It's very easy for it to capture you It's the language of your Neshama You will catch on Maybe you won't be able to learn it so easily when you're outside of Eretz Israel But you're in Eretz Israel for like a year or so, you'll catch on You'll easily catch on And I, in my experience, people don't catch on to other languages that easily I don't care where you're from. And I've noticed it even with non-Jews. I've, I've noticed it with non-Jews. Like they speak fluent Hebrew like that. You know? That's, that's how Lashon HaKodesh, how special it is. So therefore, Yosef HaTzadik refused to speak it. He refused to speak other languages. <clears throat> so now, Vezeu, and this is why it says, Vayomer Yosef Elechav Ani Yosef. And I said, how everything fits. Everything fits. Yosef HaTzadik reveals himself to his brothers. What does he say in that monumental moment, historical moment? I was speaking to my wife again the other night. I was like, like, you couldn't even make a movie this good. The greatest producer in the world couldn't make a movie this good. Like the true story of Yosef and his brothers. It's the most unbelievable story Ever, right? He reveals himself to the brothers and he says, "Ani Yosef, I am Yosef. Is my father alive? What does he follow it with? He says, Kelomar, Yosef Davka, I am Yosef, <coughs> specifically. And then he says, Vehine, You kind of wonder why he even said this. Now it makes sense. Vehine your eyes see, this is what Yosef says to his brothers, your eyes see, that my mouth is speaking to you. What does that even mean? He's trying to prove that he's the same Yosef, right? And he says, your eyes do see, that is my mouth that is speaking to you. What does he mean? I am still speaking the original Lashon Kodesh to you. Right? He never, huh? he never stopped. He was telling them, I never ever stopped. They got them laviet kol kavodi. So go to my father and tell him all of my kavod, all of my glory. And go quickly and bring my father here. Why did he so quickly say this? He says, Kelomar to say, Tell my father, don't be worried about the galut, the exile that he feels he caused. Right? That he brought this Aramaic language into the Torah. That he might feel that there might never be a geula, a redemption for his children. I fixed it. 
Ki pi hamdaber alechem. I chose to keep this language alive here. 210 years later, 210 years later, in what zechut did Bnei Israel get redeemed? One of the zechuyot that it was redeemed them was, they never changed their language. Where did it come from? Ki pi hamdaber alechem. Alechem. It's the same language I'm speaking with you now. Yaakov Avinu was worried that maybe the children will not survive. Yosef HaTzadik told them, this too I was metakin. This too I fixed. Don't worry about the problem that you brought Yegar Sahduta into the Torah. I was metakin. I fixed it by speaking only Lashon HaKodesh. Bezehu, and this is the... That the whole Talut started because of the Yaakov thing. That's what his, that's what the, the is pointing out that Yosef Tzadik was hinting to his father. Wow. And last week, what we covered was another thing that Yosef Tzadik was metaken, which was the physicality and immorality that he was metaken. Also, that was one of the other zechuyot that the Jews had from Yosef Tzadik. Right now, what Yosef said to the brothers that it's written in the Torah. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, that's the pasuk. Okay. Vezeu. Now we come to answering the question. This is uvishpilo. This is why the midrash says uvishpilo ani nigle basene ve'eg alotam. Because of him, I will reveal myself in a sene, in a bush, and redeem them. Shene emar, as it says, ganti bizroa bene Yaakov ve'Yosef sela, as the pasuk says in um, Tehillim. I redeemed your nation, the children of Yaakov and Yosef Selah. And we said, why Yaakov and Yosef? Because they were the children of Yaakov, the Pasuk is saying two things. So he says, I redeemed the children of Yaakov and Yosef Selah. Why use both names? Was it Yaakov or Yosef? Which one? So he says, because they were the children of Yaakov, they were punished with the exile because of Yaakov Avinu, because they were the children of Yaakov Avinu. Ve Yosef Tiken, however, Yosef fixed it by speaking only in Hebrew. Uvizchutonik Alu, and in the Zechut of Yosef they were redeemed, and that's why it says, Bene Yaakov, Ve Yosef Sela. We went in, so to speak, because of Yaakov Avinu also. And then Hashem revealed in the Sene because of hatred of the brothers, the Yosef Sela. <coughs> but Yosef brought the redemption because he fixed the problem. Ukmoshe Parash Rashi, just like Rashi explains in <coughs> Pasuk, <coughs> sorry, in Perek Gimel, the third Perek, Pasuk Yud Gimel, Pasuk 13. Keshem Sheraiti Asene Oseshi Lichuti Veenen Ukal. Just as you see that the bush is performing my mission without being consumed, so too you may go my mission and you will not be harmed. These were the words of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, so to speak, to Moshe Rabbeinu, telling him, you see how this bush is burning, but it's not being consumed? You will do my shlichut, you will go as my command, at my command, you won't be hurt either, don't worry. I got your back. Right? Basically, that's what God said to Moshe. Af anu, one sec. I'm almost done. Af anu nomar. So we could also say further that the, the way the bush symbolizes Yosef in a similar sense. Lefisha Yosef hayabam Mitzrayim because Yosef was also in Egypt. Egypt. Bimkom tum'ah. In a place of total filth. Tum'ah, impurity. Veshamaret atzmo milihyot nizok. And he safeguarded himself from not being damaged and harmed. Why? Keeping his language. Keeping himself pure in this filthy place. Velo shinat shemovet leshono. He didn't change his name or his language. Mishum hachi bishvilo nigna kadosh baruchu basene. And because of him, Hashem redeemed B'nai Israel by first revealing himself in the Sene. So to speak, to say, you see, Yosef HaTzadik survived in Egypt by keeping himself pure. And he, didn't, he was never harmed. So I too will reveal myself in a Sene that is burning, but is not being consumed. To symbolize Yosef HaTzadik. Sh'af ki haya sham ha'esh 
even though there is fire, hasene enenu ukal, the bush is not being consumed. The Hebrew language, our lashon hakodesh, our names, our morality. This is what keeps Bnei Israel alive and thriving in the galut, in the exile. We say the, the doings of our forefathers is a forever signature for, for their children. We have to learn from our forefathers. Keeping our language alive. Not changing our names. Not becoming like the rest of the world. There's nothing wrong with the rest of the world. It's just not us. We have to remember our traditions, we have to remember our culture, we have to remember Judaism, we have to remember the Torah. We have to learn the Torah, we have to teach the Torah. We can never, ever, ever stop passing the torch of Torah. That is our survival period. That's what Yosef was telling Bnei Israel, that's what Yosef was telling his brothers. Go tell Abba not to worry. Because here in this filth, I kept all of it alive. We will be redeemed. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu reveals himself in the Senet to symbolize Yosef also. To say, in the Zichut of Yosef, I am redeeming everyone. Why? Because he brought that Shefa into Egypt by guarding himself. That power resides here in Egypt, the power of redemption. And at the same time, telling Moshe Rabbeinu, you won't be hurt either, just like the Senet. So many things in one place got answered. A beautiful Midrash a beautiful Zerah Shimshon and a lesson for life. My friends, we have to stay true to our traditions. We have to stay true to the Torah, to the max. This is the time. We're living in the time of Moshiach. This is it. There's no other time. We're, 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 we're living in historic times. <coughs> and we have to kind of like up it a bit. We, we, kinda, we gotta be a little bit more Active. We're in the most difficult of Yes, that's why we have to be even more active. Sometimes I see families. Again, this is something personal that I see. I'm not talking in halachic terms or anything like that. Sometimes I see I see families like changing their last names completely. They have like a totally Jewish last name, and then the last name becomes something else. That to me is is a little bit of a loss of traditions. You know, people that, you know, uh, they have breeds of their sons or, or naming of their daughters. And the name is so something so far. Yeah, so far from our... I watched the video. I watched the video of Rabbi Yosef Zatzal. This happened a couple of times. People used to want to name their children, Right? And so they would send a letter or a message to Rabbi Vadia asking like, which name do you think is best for us to name our child? And there's videos, you can YouTube it. So his nephew or this person that usually would help him comes over to him and says, we received the message. This person says they want to name their child and they have these options. Right? I kid you not. There's a bunch of Israeli names. They're Ivrit, but they're not original Hebrew names. They're not Jewish names. Just because something is Israeli or Ivrit, it doesn't make it Jewish, right? It could be a bunch, uh, you know, you put letters together, you come up with a nice name, right? So they show him the list. He looks at it and says, and the, he's, the Shamash is telling him the names are, the options are this and that and that. So he says, tell them to name him Abraham. So he goes, but that's not one of the choices. He goes, tell them to name him Abraham. He goes, but they're not, <laughs> listen to this, he goes, but they're not so Haredi, they're not so religious, so they wanted something more modern. He goes, what, Abraham was Haredi? Abraham wasn't Haredi, he was an Evri, Abraham. And he goes back to his learning, <laughs> right? <laughs> and you, you kind of like, you, you have to hold yours. Another one was a girl's name, right? And he goes, Sarah. He goes, but they're, 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 it's not one of those. He goes, tell him the name is Sarah. You know? Because he held, we have such powerful names in the Torah. Lashon HaKodesh is not just a language. I just explained to you that, it, that it's, it, it dominates. There's a reason. It's God's, HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the entire world through the letters of Lashon HaKodesh. The entire world was created through it. 
There's so much that we could do. There's safarim written, books and books written only on the language of Hebrew. How the words all have meanings. The names of different things in Hebrew all are the personality of that thing. They reveal so much secrets. Like a dog is called Kelev. Right? And Chacham, you say the reason a dog was called Kelev by Adam Arishon, Kulo Lev, because it's all heart. A dog is a very sensitive animal. So it's called Kelev. Right? There are so many different things in Hebrew that have much deeper meanings as to why it's called that. So why lose connection with, with such a deep tradition? Why change our names? Why change our language and not be proud of it? Why change who we are? Why change our Torah? That has so much depth. We have to be proud of who we are. And by proud, I don't mean... Uh, wave a flag and go, oh, I'm proud of you. Look at me, you know? No. Pride means know yourself. Know your traditions. Know who you are, where you come from. Know your Torah. That is who we are. Am Israel without the Torah has no flag, period. You have nothing. You think the Romans, you think the Greeks, you think the Germans were after our flag? An Israeli flag or whatever flag, a lion flag or a deer flag for the Shavatim. They weren't after the flag, they were after the Torah. Torah needs no flag. It's in here. And that's what we have to give to the next generation for survival. It's about our survival. Yosef HaTzadik literally told the Shavatim, the survival of our nation rides on these things. And one of them was our Lashon HaKodesh. And Lashon HaKodesh symbolizes our traditions. It's who we are. So yes, be a Rachel, be a Sarah, be a Leah. You have kids, be proud of those names. Abraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Dan, Naftali, Sachar, Zevulun. These are names. These are names that have powers. These are names that were given by the Avot. You think you understand what they were thinking when they gave those? No, we have no idea. So we come up with names, you know, jam sheet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like what about names? everyone gather. Many Israelis use a combination of the word El, like Abiel, Netanel, Gamliel. Some of these are some of these names are biblical names. Anyway, they are brought down in Tanakh someplace, right? Gabriel. Uh, some of them are brought down. Some of them are are okay, but again, the best way to choose a name is to look in the Tanakh or in the Tehillim and choose a name. There are plenty of powerful names in the Torah. You won't run out. Right? Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen. Ve'amen.